Good morning and welcome to your TVC News here in Clarence, Rockland. It's Friday the 19th of March. My name is Thomas Stockting and thank you for joining me as we bring you your latest regional update. In your headlines this week, COVID-19 latest in Prescott, Russell. Ottawa River flooding risk is assessed. Changes to the Hawkesbury water treatment plant. Road closures in Clarence, Rockland. And an extract from this week's episode of our show, In Your Ward with Councillor Simon. We start the show with some very positive news as the Mass Immunisation Centre here in Clarence Rockland will be administering its first vaccines before the week is out. The online booking system for residents aged over 80 years old in Ontario went online on Monday the 15th of March, though there were some difficulties. Many people reported errors, with the page saying the form has been tampered with, an issue that persevered for most of the day. However, Dr. Paul Rumeliotis of the Eastern Ontario Health Unit told the press on Monday night that the error had been fixed. Whether it be online or over the phone, many residents from Clarence Rockland were successfully able to book their vaccine appointments, which will be administered at the Jean-Marc Lalonde Arena as of today. Despite this positive news though, there are further concerns regarding the VOCs, the variants of concern, as Dr. Paul Rumeliotis explains. Things uh, regarding our, our, our cases, um, what, what we've been seeing now is again, uh, the situation has been that, and the rest of the province, that we're about 40% provincially of all um, positive cases uh, have been uh, mutation, the, mu the mutation, the VOCs, the variants of concern. And uh, most of those have been the UK. In fact, in our area right now, we have 40 VOCs, again, all over the Central Health Unit area. Um, and um, just to give you an idea, um, on February 25th, uh, our percentage of VOCs uh, uh, from our positives were 13.6%. Uh, March 1st to 7th, it was uh, uh, 27%. And now March 3rd to 9th, as we do previous seven days. Uh, uh, was 28.4%. So 28.4% of our positives over the last week now have been uh, VOCs, uh, which uh, again, the provincial number is about 40% in terms of uh, those numbers. Now, uh, I know that somebody had asked me uh, in the media, uh, in the questions here uh, from, from uh, the media before about uh, VOCs and which type they are. The ministry has changed right now. When there's the mutation, the uh, 5011 mutation picked up, they assume automatically it's the UK. If there's another mutation, that's a different type, a different number, I forgot the number. But if they do have that number, um, that mutation, then they would go and do the genomic sequencing. So in our situation, all but one were UK, presumably UK. So we'll keep an eye on that. But again, um, another another. Uh, uh, reminder, very strong reminder that we're, we really need to make sure that we follow the public health measures uh, and, and, uh, and, sh and understand that this, this form, this uh, variant actually transmits itself much more easily when a lapse occurs. So it's important, important, although we know how we, we can contain it. Uh, fortunately, we, when we had an outbreak uh, in one of, the, one of the factories a couple of weeks ago with three cases, they were contained because we took action immediately. But again, if you lose track, if you, if you lose control of them, they, they spread to dozens and dozens of people, literally, that we've seen across the province. So I think we're lucky in that regard, but we still have to be very, very careful uh, moving forward um, uh, with that. With Ottawa having moved into the red zone, eyes are being cast towards our local numbers as we edge ever closer to, for, to further restrictions. In Prescott, Russell, there are currently 30 active cases, of which 14 are in Clarence, Rockland. Throughout the EOHU, there is a total of 181 active cases, with 16,355 vaccines having been administered so far. More vaccines are on the way as we come into spring, but not only that, the weather is warming too, and with it comes snow melt and minds are being cast towards the benefits that come with spring, such as enjoying the outdoors and maybe enjoying a patio or two. Locally, following the events of 2017 and 2019, however, there are fresh concerns concerning floodings. 
With a warning having been issued by the South Nation Conservation over the past couple of weeks, I spoke to Manon Lalonde, an executive engineer with the Ottawa River Regulation Planning Board, to find out the risks for this coming spring. Ms Lalonde explained that the snow cover, not only along the Ottawa River close to us, but in the basins further north that feed into the river, is very usual for this time of year. As for the risk of flooding, Ms Lalonde said it was a 1% chance that it all comes down to the kind of rainfall we experience over the coming months. To be prepared, make sure you keep an eye out for press releases by the South Nation Conservation Authorities, especially if we experience rainfalls over 25 millimetres. Ms Lalonde said that alarm bells should start ringing if you see such a rainfall. The full interview with Manon Lalonde is available in French via our YouTube channel. Now, our next story takes place in the town of Hawkesbury, where the wo local water treatment plant is receiving a much needed upgrade. They will be replacing the plant's clarifier, which is used to separate solid waste from clean water using graffiti and has been in place since the plant was built way back in 1954. The construction will result in two new clarifiers that utilize active flow technology that will leave a smaller carbon footprint, but will still be able to outperform the old equipment. New TVC 22 reporter Bruce de la Cruz has more. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know how water treatment works, could you explain the kind of the main process just in general? Yes, perfect. So um, we start by uh, taking the water from the river, so Ottawa River in this case, and uh, there's a screening right at the, at the source, and then we uh, bring it in uh, the plant and we do a, a clarification or maybe more uh, familiar with the sedimentation. So basically we're trying to separate the solid versus the, uh, the liquid. And then there's a process of uh, what they call flocculation. So basically assisted chemical to help for this sedimentation. Then we go through um, filters. So we filters. Uh, usually filters are composed of sand and anthracite. Anthracite is a, it's a carbon uh, der derivative. Uh, and then after it's um, filtered, we, um, we do um, a disinfection. So we use, a, in this case, chlorine, and then we disinfect and uh, we store it. And after uh, uh, we could add uh, fluoride in the water for, um, for, for purpose of uh, fluoridation, or even uh, in this case, we also use a, a corrosion inhibitor. So, so basically what that means is uh, we have uh, iron piping in, uh, in Oxbury. So uh, to help control the corrosion from inside, we do put another chemical. And so kind of take us through why we need to get new equipment. Uh, how is that affecting efficiency? How it's affecting the quality of the water? Yes, so um, the plan, the original plan is 1954. So um, um, I was, as I was explaining earlier, we have a different process. In this particular process, the clarification process, it's the original uh, reservoir or chlorine or clarification uh, tank and it's 1954 so over 60 years um, the technology changes but also um, back then the regulation um, let's say for parameter like turbidity was higher than today so we can't have the same capacity with the reservoir and uh, I guess the main reason is the life expectancy of these uh, of these reservoir are, are pretty much uh, over. Uh, could you explain what the new upgrades to the clarifiers, what they're supposed to do, or if it's entirely new equipment? First of all, again, we go in the clarification process because uh, this particular project is going to be focused on, on the little areas, but the main one is the clarification. In the water uh, waterworks business, I should say, um, usually we have redundancy, so we have um, two clarifiers in this case we do have two clarifiers one the other one is about 1997 so it's a different technology um so we can talk about that after but in this case it's more like uh um the this technology is uh is well known for for this kind of area 
the water of the Ottawa River has color, which is a parameter that we're looking at. And uh, the technology we're going to put in, um, which is a high rate clarifier, so basically going fast and we can produce fast water, good water. And uh, it, it, it made us proof all over the world, but especially in the Ottawa River. Um, I think uh, Rockland has one. I think uh, Get Snow, Lafave, all in this area. So this technology has proved them uh, very efficient for this kind of, of uh, source water. So kind of take us why the quality, of the, what the quality of the water is currently and why it needs to be changed. Perfect. So the, I would like to reassure everybody. So the, the, the water quality is, is good. So we're looking more for the future. So the future, um, what I'm trying to say here is uh, the demand. So first of all, the demand. So we want to be able to produce more water in, for the uh, development, economic development. But also, um, we know that the government also increased all the time the parameter. So I was talking earlier about this particular unit that we're, the, we're gonna take offline is, was, set, was set or designed for so many uh, cubic meters back then with these parameters, but now with the new parameters, it couldn't produce the same water. So basically um, the quality is still good. It's just if we had a high demand, we can't uh, follow all the new parameters with this one. So right. we're just gonna look for the future more. Uh, kind of backtracking, when you were talking about redundancy and how you have two clarifiers currently, uh, is that uh, like a backup plan? Is that how, is that going to play into how you're still going to be able to provide water to Hawkesbury during the renovation process? Yes, that's exactly um, the purpose of redundancy is um, when you want to put uh, one system offline for maintenance purposes or, or repair, you always have a backup. Uh, like I said, the new clarifier, 1997, is going to be helpful in this case when we uh, start working on the other one. There's still some development on the sequencing, so how are we going to really process uh, uh, and, and, and the sequence of how we're going to do it. There's other option also. There's You could have a mobile clarifier set up in a truck beside if you need it out. But at this point, I think uh, we're relying on the second clarifier for a short period of time. So for sure, timing is 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 all uh, is the key here. It's good to know. It's good to know that we won't have to boil water while this whole process is going on. No, exactly no. So that's not the point. We don't want to go there. Um, we have. Uh, we can talk about the, the demand a bit of the water. So that's another um, a topic. So. Not only um, we're producing water for Oxbury, we also uh, produce for uh, Van Cleek Hill and Lorignal. So it's, it's, it's gonna be uh, enough for everybody. So nobody has to worry about uh, missing water or boiling water. We're gonna keep the same quality and, every, and all the parameters that we need to do. Uh, can you tell us where we are currently in the, where our progress is currently in the project? Have we started? Is construction started? Are we? just in the design uh, phase? Yes, so uh, this is part of a, a large um, strategic 20 year plan. So we started in 2018. So just when I started basically as a, as a superintendent and we're, um, we're looking into, a, like I said, a, a bigger picture, like a 20 year. Um, we're already uh, right now working on one project um for chemical upgrade but this this particular project that we're talking about these clarifier we're in the design design phase till summer end of the summer and by the end of the year early 2022 we should be going into tender process for um choosing our our, const our, our constructor uh yeah tell us a little bit about the budgets and all the government funding that's been happening Perfect. So we, we did get a, a grant. So um, it, uh, it's a uh, infrastructure. Uh, let me let me rephrase this here. Uh, infrastructure. Uh, sorry about that. No worries. It's we use a lot of acronym in English, and I, I I'm uh, so it's ICIP. So investing in Canada infrastructure program through the green infrastructure stream. 
So basically, we're getting a million dollars from 1.1 from the million dollars from the federal and about 900,000 uh, from the provincial. Um, for this particular funding, um, they only assess the uh, clarifier, like I was telling you before, it's a bigger project that we have right now. So um, if we look at the clarifier, we it's about $2.6 million. So the rest of the town's gonna be, but we're, we're addressing a lot of other things like a, a perhaps a renewal of a filter, et cetera. So um, the total project for that two years is gonna be um, around 6 million, $6.1 million. Uh, could you tell me why people should care about this new upgrade? Just like the random person off the street, Hawkesbury, why this should matter to them? Man, we're, we're investing in, 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 into the infrastructure and uh, we're up to date basically and, and we're following the trends. And like I said, we're ready for future development and, and it's very uh, optimistic for, for our region, yes. so. And, and also for surrounding uh, communities. Just tell me about, uh, you know, what's your favorite part of serving Hawkesbury in this regards? Hey, um, I'm gonna take advantage of uh, your question here and uh, just, uh, I'm happy to work for Hawkesbury because um, they do find money and they do find, uh, and so the teamwork um, from, from the, uh, uh, elected people to the operational team. We have a good team and, and, and it's going really well. Everybody's proud of their work and, and, and that's great. We, uh, we, we feel like uh, we're giving uh, the best we can and the best potable water uh, in the region. There have been some local road closures announced due to the risk of spring flooding. Dulac Road from 2787 going south to Lalonde Road. Lalonde Road starting 15 metres east of La Belle Road to Rollin Road and from 4043 Boileau Road to Ettyville Road will be closed for the foreseeable future. There are also some upcoming changes to Du Park Avenue, just in front of our TV station actually, to accommodate the vaccination clinic days. So despite these changes, it is some very positive news. Today, the Friday 19th of March, Thursday the 25th of March and Thursdays the 1st and 15th of April will see Du Park Street become a one-way street. Access will be from Simono Street and traffic will head west towards St. Joseph Street in order to provide accessible parking spaces for residents who will be vaccinated at the Jean-Marc Lalonde Arena. And speaking of roads, the, in this week's episode of our show, In Your Ward, I spoke to councillor Christian Simard about the upcoming work on Dulac Avenue, as well as the municipality's 10-year plan. Hello and welcome back to part two of episode six here of our show in the wards. We are of course still in ward six speaking to councillor for ward six, Mr. Christian Simard. And uh, as stated at the end of the first half of the show, the second half is a topical issue. And today we're touching very much on Christian's uh, construction and infrastructure knowledge as we embark a little bit on some of the big taxpayer costs for the city. We stood on Chemin du Lac, and right. before we dive into this road specifically, and when I say dive in, I mean if I can get my feet out of the mud for a second, yeah. um, let's talk about, about roads and infrastructure in themselves because they are the biggest ticket item when it comes to budget, right? They're, they are so expensive for the taxpayer. It's what really determines how high, the, how high the tax percentage is going to be. So what is the reason councils so pump so much money and have such a high, high interest in resurfacing and redoing roads? Roads are the biggest complaint we that I actually I get as a counselor. Yeah. If there's something wrong, we Saint Pascal is, is a, a big community. Lots of like we're all far apart, so lots of roads. But that's all we've got pretty much. We've got the community center, the church, postal office. That's pretty much it. But roads is what people do not have something to say about. It's what's going to cost them the most money. If something, if the roads are bad, they're late for work. It costs them money. The roads are bad, they have a misalignment on the car, they have to realign the car, 
cost of money. So it, it's it's really an issue. So one of those for like to give people a little bit of perspective about it when budget and tax season comes around and you see how much your percentage is going up in terms of how much you're going to have to pay that year and you see how much is put on roads it's, a, it's actually an investment it's people investing their tax dollar into the road to be able to ensure that as you say they're not late for work and mm -hmm. they don't have issues with their cars uh, as I stated at the start of this we are stood in uh, Chemin du Lac yeah uh, it's a, it's a Lac road, du Lac road there yep. you go in English um, talk to us a little bit about Chemin du Lac because uh, I lived in the Falkland Islands for a couple of years and this road is very reminiscent of the roads I see down there. Mm -hmm. So Chemin du Lac was a paved road, asphalt road, that wasn't touched for probably over 30 years. Some portions were done, mm -hmm. but it was really in, uh, it, it was pitiful. Um, so I actually have videos of following a bus with my kids on the bus because I had to go pick them up um, going 15 kilometers an hour on Chemin du Lac. And it that's because the bus was forced to go that slow, was it? That's it. It was so rough. The, 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 the uh, potholes were so big that you couldn't go faster than that. Uh, it, it was horrible. It was so dangerous that the city, uh, it wasn't even planned, and the city had to pulverize the world back into gravel road because uh, for liability reasons, so we wouldn't get uh, sued for somebody uh, getting killed even because it was so rough. And talk to us a little bit about um, the different kinds of road surfaces there, because you mentioned asphalt. It is not asphalt now, is it? No, it isn't. Right now it's gravel. Well, it's the asphalt grounded up and the gravel that was underneath that is mixed together. That's what we have right now. Mm -hmm. So you have asphalt, gravel, or uh, surface treatment. There is something called also scratch coat, but it's just a top layer of asphalt on top of existing asphalt also. So there's going to be, the reason why we are stood on this particular road and we're talking about this topic mm -hmm. is because there is a big investment coming into redoing this, this road, isn't it? So talk to us about how much money the city is about to put into this road and uh, what are you doing with it? Okay, so we have 5.1 kilometers of road to be done. So from uh, the uh, south end of uh, Dulac, to the north end mm -hmm. uh, until baseline. Uh, we're, it's going to cost $1.1 million just to do surface treatment. Um, if we would have wanted to have real asphalt, it would have cost $1.7. Okay. With that, we're going to be changing the uh, culvert that's over there. And uh, everything, when we're going to do it, it well, all depends how, when the water, lower, water table lowers and all that when we do uh, for the to change that culvert because we have to do the culvert before we start uh, doing the road surface. So the culvert down there, why is it so important to replace that one? Right now it is past his, uh, his lifetime expectancy mm -hmm. and uh, you don't want to wait too long that has a, you create a sinkhole or something like that. And you mentioned that uh, the, the road hadn't had much done on it in over three decades there. Um, what was the reason why this road where got into such a state of disarray and why it was left it was left untreated for so long? So in the past, they had, they had a plan of how to do the road, but the plan was whoever yells the loudest yep. would have the road done. So the councillor that would want, so the councillor would decide who would have which road done. Now it's a different process. It's a 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. So there's a counselor, a uh, consultant that comes and tells you, uh, ask you questions. Well, what's the, like, how many people goes in on the road? How many people will, um, Hi there. so how many people, so how many people will, uh, the, travel on the road? How many people live on the road? Um, is it a main artery? Is it a collector road that mo other little street goes to and stuff like that? So with the, what the counselor tells them how, like. So it used to be a little bit more of a free for all is what you're saying essentially. Yes. So counselors would just come up and as you say, in a council meeting, shout the loudest about the road that they're probably being shouted about, as you say, because yeah. it's the thing that has the most complaints. That's it. Uh, whereas now there's a little bit more of a constructive plan. When was this 10 year plan put in place? Uh, in 2014 or 15, I think. It was, that, it was the 2014 council yes, then, it was it? They, so, they put it in. So to the 10 year plan, am I right in saying that's the asset management plan? It is. It's okay. part of it. Part of it. Yes, because the asset management plan is ev it's everything. Everything that's an asset to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, but every city's asset management is different a little bit. 
like some people, w some cities will say, well, uh, ditches are an asset, yeah. but other people know it's not an asset. It's drainage for your asset, which is the road. So it all depends on which city you're talking to about it. So us, the uh, ditches are not part of our asset management. It, the road is. So, so what is what is the benefit of having an asset management plan like this in place? It's you you know what's coming up. It's being proactive instead of being reactive. Mm -hmm. So that way you can manage your money better. You know, so with the reserves and all that, you know, well, I'll put a little bit more money aside, put a little bit more money aside. Like last year, we put two hundred and eleven thousand uh, dollars in the reserve, and the year before that was a hundred and something. Uh, so every that's going to come back every year because that went with the it goes with your tax hike. Mm -hmm. So that comes back every year. So we can do a little bit more, just a little bit more. The problem is right now in Clarence Rockland is we need pretty much an extra $3 million to be doing every road. Okay. So we can be proactive on roads that are in so-so condition fixing, but we have to be reactive like we did with Dulac that was so bad and so much liability to the city that we have to change it completely. So that's it for the end of this program. You can watch all the episodes from our show in your ward on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. We're also actively looking for volunteer and civilian journalists. So if you're interested in taking up a hobby locally, get in touch as we'd love to have you. If you have a new story idea that you think needs touching upon, then please do reach out to me. You can reach, at, reach me at nouvelle with an S at the end at tvc22.ca or by phone at 613-446-6037, extension number four. Or of course, find us on any of our social media channels. Have a lovely weekend, Clarence Rockland. Stay safe, keep watching the news, and I will catch you next week. Goodbye.